Hello, my name is Alexander Murray with Alpha Star Academy, and today we're going to be discussing the problem cake game from the 2024 Silver December contest. We're playing a game with two cows and n cakes, and it's very important to know that n here is always even. It's an asymmetric game. Bessie, on her turn, stacks two adjacent cakes. And then at the end of the process, Bessie is going to get the final cake. Uh, on her turn, Elsie eats one cake either on the left or the right until only that final cake remains. And the question is, how much cake does each cow get with optimal play? So to make this make sense, let's uh, go through an example. So here we have the sample input 10, 20, 30, 40. This is the sort of different uh, sizes of the cakes. And El Bessie always starts the game. So on Bessie's turn, she is going to combine the two cakes in the middle. The reason why she wants to focus on the middle is if she combines anything on the edges, she can potentially create a more tasty cake for Elsie to eat, but she doesn't want to help Elsie. So she's going to combine the two cakes in the middle, and she's going to create a new cake with size 50. So it combines the sizes of the previous two cakes. Now, Elsie is, uh, can choose between eating the cake with size 10 or the cake with size 40. She's, of course, of course going to choose the size 40 cake. That's more cake. So she's going to eat that, leaving just two cakes remaining, a cake of size 10 and a cake of size 50, which then Bessie's going to stack and create one cake of size 60. Since um, there is only one cake remaining, Bessie gets to eat it, and we can see that the final counts are Bessie gets 60 pieces of cake, and Elsie gets 40 pieces of cake. Now, when you're uh, solving these sort of asymmetric games, a good first step is to try to work out which player has more power, or which player is sort of playing on the offense, which player is playing on the defense. And to do that, let's take a look at sort of a more illustrative example. Here we have eight different cakes. Most of them are worth one point, but there is this cake slightly to the left that is worth 10 points. So both cows are going to want this cake. Whoever can eat this cake is going to win the game because this cake is worth more than all of the other cakes combined. So the question is, who gets to eat this cake? And sorry, I, I mean, there are 10 cakes here. So 19 points in total. This cake is worth 10. So the question is, can Bessie eat this cake or can Elsie eat this cake? So Elsie is going to try her best to eat this cake. And what's Elsie going to do to try her best to eat this cake? She's going to eat just everything on the left. She's going to keep eating on the left, just getting closer and closer and closer to this cake. The question is, can Bessie do anything to stop it? And the answer is no. So let's try a couple of different strategies that Bessie has at her disposal. One thing that Bessie can do is she can ignore the cake with 10 points and simply just combine two values in the center. That seems like a very reasonable strategy. Um, and if she does this, we end up with the following array of cakes. Elsie is going to use the opportunity to eat a cake and get one step closer. Bessie is again going to ignore the cake worth 10 points and combine two in the center. So we're going to get 10, 3, 1, 1, 1. Again, we're just combining these two cakes into one worth three. And Elsie is again going to use the opportunity to get closer to that cake worth 10 points. Bessie's going to continue her strategy of ignoring the expense or the, uh, the valuable cake. And we're going to combine these two cakes to get four. And Elsie is going to use this opportunity to get closer to the cake worth 10 points. If Bessie continues ignoring the expensive cake, then we end up with 10, 5, 1. And Elsie is able 
to eat the cake worth 10 points. So ignoring the, uh, the, the sort of valuable cake is not in Bessie's best interest. However, if Bessie chooses to do anything with the expensive cake, it doesn't help either. Uh, in fact, it actually makes the problem worse. So if Bessie combines the expensive cake with one of the adjacent nearby ones, all that Bessie is doing is making that cake more valuable for Elsie when she finally gets it. Right When she finally makes it all the way to that cake, all Bessie has done is made the cake even more tasty. So uh, ignoring the cake doesn't help Bessie, and uh, trying to protect the cake makes it just worse. So Bessie is definitely playing on the defense here, and Elsie is playing on the offense. Elsie sort of gets to decide how much cake she wants to eat. So um, is there anything that Bessie can do to prevent Elsie from eating this cake? Absolutely not. So Bessie is going to end up with six points. She's going to get all of these. And Elsie's going to end up with 13 points. She's going to get all of these. So that's a favorable outcome for Elsie. Bessie can't do anything to prevent it. And what this tells us is that Elsie gets to choose which of the following regions she is going to eat. So she can eat every th the first four cakes. Um, she could eat the first three cakes and the last cake. She could eat the first two cakes and the last two cakes. She could eat the first cake and the last three cakes, or she could eat the last four cakes. Elsie gets to decide which of those regions she wants to eat, and there's nothing Bessie can do to prevent her from eating that region. So what Elsie is going to do is she's just going to select the maximum points amongst any of those regions, and then she will get that many points, and Elsie, uh, Bessie will get the remainder. So what we want to do is we just want to calculate sort of the sum of one of these regions, and then we want to loop over all the possible regions and save the maximum number of points across any of them. So let's try coding this up. We're going to start by reading in T. This is the number of test cases. So we're just going to loop over T and read in N, the number of cakes. And then we're going to read in the size of each cake. So this is just a list of the end cakes and their point values. We're going to start by creating a count. And this counts everything in the last portion of the cakes array. So this is the largest suffix of the cakes array that Elsie could eat. Um, so we're going to sum that up. And then what we're going to do on every other step is we're going to subtract one from the end and then add one from the beginning. So we're going to loop over all of these regions. And we're going to add the most recent cake. And we're going to subtract the oldest cake. So we're going to say we're looking at this region to start. That's four cakes. Then we're going to subtract this cake off, look at these three cakes, and add this new cake. So once we're looking at those four regions, we're going to subtract off this. We're going to look at these two cakes. We're already looking at this cake, and then we'll add this one. So at every moment in time, we're removing a cake, and we're adding a cake. And what we want to store across all of these different sums is the maximum sum that Elsie can find. So this is uh, just sort of a sliding window problem. So um, once we have the maximum value of any sliding window that Elsie can eat, we're going to print out the amount Elsie can eat and the sum of the cakes minus the amount Elsie eats. Namely, this is what's left over for Bessie. And that completes the code. Thank you guys so much for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one.